Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Vivek. In the last video, I was discussing about the mitigation of harmonics and there I told you about these two things, pitch factor and distribution factor. And I talked about the importance of pitch factor and how it helps in mitigation of harmonics. So if you haven't watched that video, I would recommend you to watch that video first. The link of the same has been given in the description down below as well as in the I section in the top right corner. In this video, we will talk about the distribution factor and we will see what is the effect of distribution factor on harmonics and what are the allied concepts. So we will see all of that here. Let's get started. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and press the bell icon to receive the notification of every single video I make. Now, to understand distribution factor, we have to first of all go through uh, some allied concepts of distribution factor that is types of winding okay we will see what are the types of windings what it means when we say distribution okay what it means when we say concentrated we will see all of that then we will jump to phase spread phase belt slot pitch all of these concepts are related to distribution and then we will finally go to distribution factor. So let's start with our first topic that is concentrated and distributed winding. Normally when we talk about any machine or when uh, we think about a machine, a rotating machine, what comes to our mind is that there are three phases, let's say it is a three phase machine. So each of the phases starts from one side and end at the next side. Okay, something like this, like first phase, this is the second phase and this is the third phase. Right. So one side of the winding is at one under one pole and another side is under the next pole. So this kind of winding is called concentrated winding. Why it is called concentrated? Because you can see the winding is just concentrated between two points or two poles or two slots. It is just concentrated between two slots. But in an actual rotating machine, we don't use concentrated winding. Rather, we use something called distributed winding. Okay, in distributed winding what happens, unlike the case of concentrated winding where the winding is just concentrated between two slots, what we do, there are a number of slots that are cut out on each pole. Okay, so the winding that is going, the each phase winding that is going, it goes through all of these slots. So let's say there are four slots, so this is a four slot machine and the phase winding goes through all the four slots. There are different advantages of using the distributed winding. Although designing a distributed winding machine is costly, but it has its own advantage. The first is that the concentrated winding doesn't generate rotating torque. That is the type of torque required for movement of the machine. Maybe theoretically gen it can be generated, but in a practical machine, concentrated winding is not used because it is not efficient for rotating machine. The second thing is that the effective use of core material can only be achieved in case of distributed winding. Why? Because what is happening, you can see, because here you can see the whole of the core material can be utilized. Why? Because the winding has been distributed all over this machine. Whereas in this case, what, what is happening, the winding is just concentrated at some point, right? In this case. So if the winding is concentrated at some points, so some parts will have greater flux, some part will don't have that much amount of flux. And because of that, it will also give rise to eddy current losses. As we know that leakage fluxes increase, so the eddy current losses will also increase. So that's why distributed winding is great. The third thing is about the mechanical strength of the machine. In this case, you can see the winding has been concentrated at some point. So some points have greater weight than the other parts where the winding is not available like this or this or this. But here what is happening as the whole machine is slotted. Here I'm just showing you a part of the machine. But in actual sense, this whole of the machine has been slotted. So what happens because of this slotting, the windings are distributed over entire the part of the machine and hence the machine strength is good. So this is the, these are the advantages of distributed winding and of course the harmonics that we are going to discuss here today is also mitigated because of this distributed type of winding. Distribution factor comes from the distributed winding. Next we come to phase belt, phase spread and slot pitch. These are the 
sub parts or what i can say allied concepts of the distributed type of winding what is phase belt just we saw the concept of uh, slotting so phase belt may be defined as the number of slots under each pole per phase okay so there is a phase winding we saw and there are some slots so there are some poles on the machine and each pole carries some number of slots so this number of slots per pole per phase that is the number of slots pertaining to one phase under each pole is known as phase belt okay so here what is the phase belt you can see 1 2 3 4 so there here the phase belt is 4 in our case next we come to phase spread as the name says what is phase spread phase spread is nothing but the angle subtended by the phase belt at the center of the machine is known as the phase spread so this entire angle that you are seeing is called the phase spread denoted by let's say lambda okay and let's say phase belt is denoted by m so this is denoted by lambda and what is slot pitch slot pitch is the angle between two slots okay so the electrical angle of course when we are talking about any angle in electrical engineering it's always the electrical angle keep in mind so slot pitch is nothing but the angle between two adjacent slots so this is denoted by beta now what is the relation between phase belt phase spread and slot pitch what we can say see what is the total number of slots that is m okay if i talk about each pole so each pole has m number of slot what is the angle between two slots beta so what is the total angle between the all slots that is called phase spread right so phase spread can be called as the product of phase belt times slot pitch we can say that right so if we know the angle between two slots and we know how many slots are there then we can find out the total angle that is the phase spread so this is the relation now let us see the individual relation so what is the phase belt we saw number of slots per pole per phase so we can write it like that phase is denoted by phi now what is slot pitch c the whole machine is a round one okay so it is a circle what is the total angle of a circle 360 degree and we are we consider that the entire machine has been slotted so there are let's say s number of slots on the entire machine so s slots have 360 degree angle right so the phase spread of s slots on the entire machine is 360 degree what is the angle between two slots so it will be 360 upon s right angle between two slots but this is the mechanical angle because we, here we consider 360 degree that is the mechanical angle and what i told you that slot pitch is electrical angle so we need to find out the electrical angle how we'll find that so electrical angle is given as when we'll talk about beta it will be p by 2 theta m right so p by 2 times 360 upon s right so this will give us 180 times p upon s right so this is what we are getting so what is our phase spread in that case therefore lambda equal to m beta we saw what is m number of slots per pole per phase and what is beta 180 p upon s so s cancels out p cancels out what we are getting lambda equal to 180 upon phi let me clear this lambda equal to 180 upon phi so what does that tell that tells us that if we know how many phases are there that is let's say it is a three phase machine so it is just that much amount of information required to calculate the phase spread so if we know that the how many phases are there in the machine in in our example let's say it is a three phase machine so for three phase machine what will be the lambda lambda will be 180 upon 3 that is 60 degree so what does that mean that means the uh, angle between the entire slot so this angle that we are seeing this one is 60 degree now let us come to to emf in distributed winding now we just saw the concept of slotting in slotting what happens there the rotor passes through each of the slots let's say these two slots you are seeing these are lying under 
a single pole. So the rotor is at let's say at t equal to t zero time, at t equal to t zero, it is lying here, and at t equal to t one, it goes here. Okay, at t equal to t one. So definitely this slot will have E max. The first slot will have E max at t equal to t zero, and the second slot will have the E max that is the maximum value of EMF at t equal to t one. What is t one? T one is t zero plus beta upon omega. Why? Because we saw the angle between two slots is beta, and if we consider the angular velocity of the machine to be omega, so beta upon omega gives us the displacement time, that is the time taken by the rotor to go from first slot to the next slot. So t zero plus beta upon omega. So what does that tell? That tells us that let's say if I draw a picture or a phaser, what I will be getting that let's say this is the first slot EMF. EMF across the first slot, and this is the EMF across the second slot. So there is a phase difference between them. How much is the phase difference? It is beta upon omega. So that tells us that the EMF generated within a pole, that is uh, inside each of the slots, will have a phase difference. So because of that, if we try to find out the EMF generated within a pole, that cannot be just a simple scalar value but it will be a vector value because there is a phase difference between the slots even though small but it remains okay so let me clear this off now see now let's say if it was a concentrated winding machine what would have happened e max would have been added together right because in concentrated winding what is happening there is no such slot so all the windings are lying overlapping each other so there is no phase difference we could have added it directly but here what is happening as there is a phase difference therefore the scalar addition is not possible here what we need to do here we need to do the vector sum okay so it will be under root e max square That is the EM, uh, maximum EMF at the first slot plus E max square plus two E M square cos beta, right? Clear? Because beta is the angle between the two two slots, so this will come out to be resultant will come out to be how much? It will come out to be E M under root. One plus two cos beta, right? Now one plus two cos beta. That means let's say even if the cos has its highest value, that is one. What will happen? One plus two, that is under root three. That means one point seven three two times of the EM. Okay. And what we saw in case of the scalar addition, in case. If it was a concentrated winding, we saw it would have been a scalar sum. That is E M plus E M, so it would have been two E M. But here we are getting one point seven three two E M. So this means that the distributed winding has the maximum E M F less than that in case of the concentrated winding. And this is the disadvantage of the distributed winding that whenever the winding is distributed, the E M F generated is always less than the case of the concentrated winding. right so this is the major disadvantage of distributed type of winding next we come to the distribution factor and harmonic elimination we saw in the last video i derived this formula e equal to 4.44 phi m f n kp where kp was the pitch factor right with this the another factor comes up here that is called kd or the distribution factor okay what is this kd kd is nothing but the vector sum of emf upon the scalar sum of emf okay so basically what does this mean this means what is the emf generated in case of the distributed winding when divided by what is the emf generated in case of the concentrated winding machine the ratio between both is known as the distribution factor so it helps us to compare that how much of the emf how much percentage or how much part of the emf 
in case of concentrated winding is being generated in case of the distributed winding and hence this factor comes up with this equation why it is coming up with this equation because in the last video when i was making the video on pitch factor there i considered that the machine is the concentrated winding type okay so there doesn't come kd but whenever we are considering the distribution factor so what does that means that means that the scalar sum of emf is abolished and now the vector sum of the emf generated per slot will be taken into account and that's why this factor kd is multiplied to represent it better but how it helps us in mitigating the harmonics when kd is calculated completely okay it gets out it comes out to be sin m beta upon 2 by m sin beta upon 2 what is m phase belt number of slots per pole per phase what is beta angle between the two consecutive slots electrical angle okay and we saw that what is our m beta this one m beta is the phase spread right we know lambda equal to m beta we derived right so even if i know lambda so the upper portion can be known that is sin m beta upon 2 can be calculated and for the lower one we need to know at least the beta or the m okay so by that we can find out the kd this is in the case of fundamental emf in case of harmonic emf let's say it is a nth harmonic emf so what will happen in case of nth harmonic emf kd becomes sin m n beta upon 2 by m sin n beta upon 2 right so this is what comes up now we saw that kd is being multiplied to this emf that value that is 4.44 phi m fn kp kd okay so this can be called now the e harmonic emf okay where kd is equal to sin m n beta upon 2 by m sin n beta upon 2 now i want to eliminate this harmonic emf that is being generated this one so how i can eliminate by making the kd equal to 0 so let us just make it so kd will be equal to 0 that means i can say sin m n beta upon 2 equal to 0 right so that means m n beta upon 2 should be equal to 2k pi where k is any value 0 1 2 3 3 right so finally we can say from here that beta should be equal to how much 4k pi upon mn right so 4k pi upon mn so that means if i know the harmonic order and i know the phase belt then i can calculate beta from this formula and let's say the k is equal to 1 okay and pi is equal to 180 we know in angle terms m here we saw what is the number of slot per pole per phase that is the phase belt what we saw it was 4 right and nth harmonic that is let's say 3 so if i calculate so here from here what i am getting it is 60 degree so that means if beta is 60 degree we can eliminate the third harmonic okay so this is how by knowing the order of harmonic and by knowing the value of m we can find out the beta and how we can find out the m we saw that lambda can be found out by using 180 upon 5 this formula right let me write it clearly lambda equal to 180 upon 5 that is the that will give us the phase spread now from here we know that this is also equal to m beta so if any one of these are known at least let's say if we know the m that it's good if we don't know then we need to find out the beta so from there we can calculate the m so we will put the m here and from here we will get the value of beta so i hope uh, i have made this clear to all of you thanks for watching if you have liked this video press the like button let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video your suggestions and feedbacks are welcomed because that helps me to understand what do you want and make a video upon the concerned topic 
so share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and press the bell icon so that you can receive the notification of every video i make this is vivek chauve signing off thank you